Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. Today we're gonna paint something very expressionistic, very loose, very intuitive, and it will be a branch of dried hydrangea flower. We already painted a macro hydrangea and now it's time to paint a big cluster of these small little tiny flowers. So let's start. A few lessons before, um, we painted a my macro hydrangea and Today we're gonna paint a big Yinrangea uh, <laughs> um, bouquet and as we are getting close to, now we are actually getting close to, to winter, to, um, to the late summer, so let's paint a dried Yinrangea, uh, it's um, uh, it's all around us. What I'm doing now, I'm with a tip of um, soft brush, I prepare the area where for Yidrange, which I will fill later on with colors. And I, it also, it help us, this technique help, helps us to map the future um, the future composition and you see I uh, my water is not that uh, really white uh, it helps me a little bit to see how I'm mapping this um, this bouquet so it's a nice tip um, for this technique you could use a little bit of diluted color as we paint um, dried hydrangea it will be a lot of brownish colors in it uh, so i use some hint of brown here uh, if, for example you would like to recreate this painting for blue or pink flowers you could add um, dilute a little bit of dilute a little bit of um, pinkish for example mm, I want to make it a little bit uneven I want to make this one maybe a little bit here I want to make it some move always nice to paint flowers with some C or S um, move um, of the main stem and now let's go to the fun part i prepared already all what i could gather what i could scrap for my palette uh, yellows oranges brownish colors and let's start fill in all this area remember that sun shines from this part so these uh, these leaves they will be more yellow, more light, more light and more bright and more diluted. And I just let watercolor flow find its way in our labyrinth which we created with just wet brush and uh, the far I go from from these top areas to the bottom I add more and more of brownish color and it's really it's really fun to watch how watercolor plays itself and find its ways in these um, in these uh, small to tunnels which we created. Always nice to add something red. It brings very festive mood to the painting. Very autumn. I don't know guys if you like autumn or not really. 
just write me in comments and I will figure out which flowers we better to focus on painting something something for <laughs> something more autumn or maybe it's always nice to paint something some summer meadow flowers yes can't be never can't be too much so sometimes i use the tip of the brush if i want to emulate some some single petals and i i keep in mind that the upper the upper parts they are lighter and the more of the flower the more the cluster goes into the shade the darker it it gets mm, i think it's always nice oh, it's very good for now to add some purple for the contrast you see how it plays lovely around This area is a bit too too white, so I thinking I will add some orange here. But this will be our front um, cluster, and it should be the most the lightest one, the lightest one. So I go really careful here. I would like to add something pink. Pink is great. Um, which kind of pink? I think that's Queen Acridon Rose. Um, but in you see, in this um, intuitive painting, it's not you know um, not that important to follow my color recommendation. I always encourage you to paint just from your palette. From what you have you shouldn't be distracted when you listen to tutorials mine or others uh, when um, teachers say you need to take this color and this color and this paper and you do not have it and then you might feel a little bit frustrated then what shall I go to the shop shall I postpone painting no you shouldn't uh trust me you could paint even with um, kids mm, paints if you have a call for paint for some paint you could just use whatever you have in your palette so we prepared the mm, how to say the background and it kind of looks like an autumn tree, so if we paint a uh, um, stem <laughs> here, we, we could tell, oh, sorry guys, Hadrangea <laughs> didn't work out, we pay, but we paint a, a lovely autumn tree instead, which is also fine. Mm, what I would like to do now is to put all our flower on and nicely on a nice stem I want to connect clusters inside and put them on a nice stem and you see just adding few contrast um, strokes somehow it connects all all our painting all our mess of everything mess of colors and it uh, and it starting to look like a um, um, branch with flowers I would like to let it dry here and there or um, yes I think it's a little bit too wet to go on the top but nevertheless 
for example, I know that we started from here and Hydran Gear has very certain middle of flowers which I'm now recreating with a bold color. I think I will mix Queen Acridon Rose and Van Dyke to get it not that brownish. A bit more interesting. Just like this. And it's... Um, you could take another brush with another shades. For example, just with a burnt sienna, and it will also nice to paint with two brushes at the same time, so you could exchange different mm, different colors, different shades without constantly washing washing colors and getting the new one as uh, here and there with the tip of the brush i try to paint few just few petals just really just a few and these tiny little details they really helps to Uh, to imitate the, um, the flower, to show some to show some details. It's always nice. So it's um, bring us from from the, something messy to something very very certain and undoubtful. I paint with the tip of the brush, I emphasize just a few of the petals, just a few. And again, I, uh, you see, I'm exchanging brushes. One is with more pinkish, pinkish color, one with more brownish. And when we switch from one to another, we get this. variety which is very pleasant for eye which is very catchy you can paint just on the top of uh, what we created sometimes paper is still wet and it allows um, the color to flow a little bit it still creates some some nice areas I would like now to add something more bluish but very carefully I will show you some cold shades would be nice and they would be nice for the front flower I paint middles of the flower and just here and there just some some petals and to, you just you look at the picture, you look at your painting, you see how your watercolor went. For example, here I see the cluster, um, I see the area which already looks like a petal. What I need to do is just to emphasize it a little bit, just to help, just to help it a little bit. With the tip of the brush, I very carefully paint now, just with the tip of the brush, I add some light areas, some darker areas. I wash my brush, I dry it, and with damp brush, I a little bit uh, soften the edges. Uh, why I'm so careful here, because it's our front cluster and uh, the main attraction for, for the viewers, so a 
few more extra details are very very appropriate here and what i'm doing i'm painting shades now it's a little bit like immersive painting when we paint shades I allow to um, some uh, to pop up some petals. Some of them I leave just in the the uh, just in the shade. Don't try to paint all the flowers you might see on the picture on your reference. It's in principle it's not very possible if you are not going to paint the um, botanical illustration which takes sometimes weeks to paint we are painting for fun for pleasure for some nice mood to relax um, what um, what's actually your main purpose i would love to um, read your feedback uh, also i'm very curious why are you uh, painting are you ju just for fun you just like watercolor or you a designer or you will use it later on uh, these illustrations so it's it's very interesting for me to know why why what brought you to painting so i'm looking at our hydrangea i what i think now would be lovely it's just to add few more details just in these one front cluster what I'm doing now you might be already tired or think oh no we already we painted already everything it's um, it's all about um, attraction it's all about focal point and this is very very important it's where our viewers will look when they see our painting. So I add some little tiny details just to this area. No need to do to paint all these details in the whole, in the whole composition. It's and again you see I'm not very precise I am trying to emulate the idea how these petals on hydrangea gear growing what's important for me to know is that it has a very certain middle very bright middle and four petals around. I'm checking the picture. Maybe I add just a few more strokes to connect it a bit more. And this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am looking forward to see your flowers. Tag me on Instagram, olga.kirsch. Subscribe my channel. Write me in comments which flower you would like to paint next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.